I'm Tim Janiszewski and welcome to Spotlight Matthew for today. We are in a teaching section by Jesus that concerns instructions on missions. And we are looking at a portion of his missions instructions that I am calling a mini missions manual. First of all, Jesus tells us what our travel instructions are to be. He then turns and tells us what we should expect, which is severe opposition. Sometimes people will not always be sympathetic or embracing of the good news message of Jesus Christ. And then we turn today to his next section in the mini missions manual, which has to do with the subject of fear. When we are opposed, when people are against us, sometimes it can raise a sense of fear within our hearts and our souls. Indeed, in today's passage, Jesus mentions the word fear. In Greek, it is phobia, from which we get phobia in English, such as claustrophobia, phobia of closed-in spaces. Arachnophobia is a fear of spiders. Xenophobia, fear of strangers. So fear, we could say, can come to us from those who oppose us when we share the good news of Jesus Christ. So we pick up today in chapter 10, verse 26. So have no fear of them, for nothing that is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them falls from the to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are numbered. Fear not, therefore, for you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will deny before my Father who is in heaven. Well, our subject is of fear is before us. We saw that Jesus introduced opposition in his last teaching in this mini missions manual. We will be opposed by those who are religious sometimes. We will be opposed in some cases by society and by government brought before kings and thrones and courts. Even enemies will be foremost among us in our own family, sometimes betrayed to prison and death. Overall, Jesus says, opposition will come from all quarters of the world. And that indeed can incite and bring about fear, understandable fear, if we are facing that kind of invasive and punitive action from other people who despise the message of Jesus Christ, wouldn't you be afraid? Well, I would be afraid. In fact, I think the number one reason why many Christians do not share word of Christ and do not let people know of their Christian profession of faith is because they're afraid. They're afraid of what people will say. They'll be afraid, maybe not of these higher forms of persecution, but lesser ones, just to be rejected by people is difficult for those who are people pleasers. I can recall this from my own life. I was converted to faith in Christ when I was in ninth grade, and it so happened that my two best buddies were Jewish in background. Well, when I became a Christian, I had to share with them that I had taken up following Jesus as the Messiah, as my Lord and Savior. I tried to do it in a very kind and courteous way, and yet immediately, they cut me off. They shunned me. No matter how much I tried to express to them that I still wanted to be their friend, even if uh, indeed they did not believe in Jesus or rejected the message, they would not uh, continue to have any kind of friendship with me. There was a price to be paid, and that can raise fear in our souls. When it does so, indeed, how are we to respond? Well, first of all, Jesus says, don't stop proclaiming the message, even in the face of fear. What you hear in the darkness, shout it in the light. He's saying, keep on telling the message of Christ. What you have heard whispered, shout from the housetops. That which is told to you about the gospel may be in private, you are to announce publicly. 
it said house tops because house tops were flat. And therefore, if you announce something to a group of people on the ground from a house top, it could be heralded and proclaimed to far more people and covering a greater span. So shouting it from the housetops was uh, the rough equivalent in the first century of grab yourself a microphone and a PA system and let it be known to other people. But then Jesus goes on and says, how do you combat the fear that comes when you refuse to shut up about your faith? First of all, we realize that Jesus commands us to continue to share good news. As I've mentioned before in other devotions, sometimes that is all we need to hear. If he's not only our savior, but our Lord, when our Lord tells us to do something like that centurion, he had a commander, when the commander told him to do something, he did it. He was in command over soldiers. If he told them to do something, they did it. He had a servant, if they, he was commanding his servant, the servant performed it. If Jesus is our Lord and he commands us to keep on talking for him, despite the fear, well, that is motivation. What soldier isn't afraid to go into battle? And yet if he is commanded, he goes into battle. And we are to go into battle as the church militant because our savior, our captain Jesus says, you gotta keep going for it. However, there's a negative motivation that Jesus then gives. He says, you know, the worst that can happen to you, your worst case scenario is that human beings can kill your body, but they can't kill your soul. They cannot touch your soul. And don't be afraid of those who can only kill the body, but not the soul. And here's where Jesus says something really radical. Rather, have a greater fear, a greater awe, a greater respect for God who can kill both your body and your soul in hell. And so Jesus is saying to us, you know, you can deny me before people and save your life for a few more weeks, years, decades, but then face the judgment of God. Or you can continue to live for Jesus and indeed take the risk that they might kill your body. But Jesus says that if you confess me before people, I will confess you before my Father. And instead of killing you, instead of slaying you, uh, indeed, he will resurrect your body and he will give you forever life because he will preserve your soul and your body in the new heavens and the new earth. And Jesus says, you gotta size it up and realize that a choice is being made between whom we fear and who will reward us. Which leads to the third motivation, which is the reward that comes to us. We can have a blessed assurance. You know, Jesus says that uh, not a sparrow falls to the ground apart from your father's knowledge and you are worth more than many sparrows and therefore have assurance that he knows and cares for you. Even the hairs on your head are numbered. He is so intimately acquainted with you and cares for you. You know, there was a first century rabbi, Rabbi Johann ben Zakkai, lived almost a hundred years, the whole first century AD, and was renowned uh, among the Jewish people for his accomplishments with the Romans and establishing the great school at Yavna from which the Old Testament was confirmed. He was indeed a great hero of Judaism in the first century. And yet in his deathbed, he was lying there and indeed saying, I don't fear human beings who can only kill me or could have killed me in my long life. But what of God? What if God does not receive me? What if he does not accept me? Because he can kill not only my body, but my soul forever. And it is him who I fear as I lie on my deathbed. Isn't it wonderful that Jesus says that if he is our Lord and Savior, our Father loves us. He knows us. He cares for us. And we can have blessed assurance when we profess him before people that we will be professed by Jesus before the Father's throne and we can have confidence, not only in this life, but in our death, even if it is death in the name of Christ, because we know the gift of eternal life is ours through our Savior. That's good news and that's motivation for us to continue to announce Jesus Christ, even in the face of fear. And that's our devotion for today. Like us on Facebook and share us with others and we will talk to you next time.